Okay, so today we're looking at ASCII and Unicode. Okay, and our main objective is to basically be able to convert letters into binary. All right, so we should kind of know how to convert numbers, as in base 10 deanery numbers into binary. Taking it one step further and looking at how we can now convert letters into binary. So obviously we can look at a keyboard, we can see all types of symbols on there. Um, computers don't understand anything besides binary. Okay, so we need to think of a system where we can essentially turn these values or characters on the keyboard into well binary. And we do that using a system called ASCII. It stands for the American Standard Code for Information Interchange, I hope. Um, it's a way of basically encoding all of the characters on a keyboard into binary. Um, and you do that by essentially assigning a deanery or a base 10 number, a decimal number, um, to a character. Um, usually standard ASCII uses seven bits of binary, which mean you can encode 128 characters. Um, and again, those numbers or not numbers, sorry, those characters um, are represented using seven bits of binary, seven digits. Why binary specifically? It's mainly because, well, the computer uses electricity to communicate with all of its various components and, you know, binary. It's a base two number system which can represent either on or off um, on the computer. Um, so the fact that it has two states that can be used to represent numbers and all other types of things makes binary perfect for this whole system. Um, here's an example of an ASCII table. Here we can see the decimal values attached to the characters. Let's say I'm looking for, um, let's say character value A, capital A. Um, capital A is given the, the decimal value, the base 10 value 65, All right? The computer itself cannot turn A, okay, capital A into binary. There's no, there's no system for that to go directly from A to binary. Um, however, there is a system to turn 65 into binary, okay? And the fact that there is this system that is matching up characters on the keyboard to decimal numbers makes that, you know, makes it possible to basically turn a character into a binary number. So let's say I'm now trying to spell, I don't know, the word cat. All right, well, let's look for, again, capital C on the ASCII table, there it is. Capital C is given the value of 67. I then end up turning 67 into a binary number. Let's go for lowercase a, as lowercase a. Lowercase a is 97, there you go, 97. Then you turn 97 into binary, and then let's look for lowercase t. Lowercase t is 116 and then 116 turn into binary is whatever. Okay, and that's the process you'd go through when you're turning characters into binary. Now, 7-bit ASCII was used to kind of give all the standard English characters. Um, it only allowed you to encode um, 128 characters in total. Um, that wasn't enough for every single character in the English language, so extended ASCII was created, which basically lets you create um, or encode um, up to 256 characters using 8-bit binary numbers. That lets you kind of encode all these symbols here, like the copyright sign and so on. Uh, the numbers we're going to be using in our kind of lesson tasks are all going to revolve around 8-bit numbers, so the binary numbers that you make um, should all be 8 bits, 8 digits. Here's an example here, again, of converting characters into binary. Same process that I literally just explained before with the whole, you know, looking at capitals and looking at the number associated to it. If you're spelling out or turning this word here, cat, with an explanation mark at the end now, um, into binary, you look for C. In the ASCII table, C is associated to 67. Um, 67 is given this binary value here. Okay, same with the next few letters, A is given the value, or A, A is the value of 97. 97 is then turned into this in binary. T is given the value of 116. 116 is then turned into 
well, this in binary, and the explanation mark is um, 33 on the ASCII table, which then means you turn it into, well, this binary number. And that's literally the process you're going through when you're turning characters into binary. Um, 256 characters is only enough for, I suppose, the English language. Okay, now, obviously, there are more languages in the world. And to represent all of the characters in those languages, um, something called Unicode was created. Again, Unicode is basically a system used to encode um, numbers using 16-bit binary numbers, um, which gives the possible of, well, gives it, makes it possible to encode 65, well, 65,000 characters. Um, so that would be enough to basically encode all of the languages in the world, and it's also being used for stuff like emojis and other kind of keyboard characters. So advantages of using this whole Unicode system are that obviously you have more characters you can encode um, in binary, more languages, emojis, and so on. Um, disadvantages, well, you're using 16-bit numbers now, which means you're taking up more memory. Uh, you might be asked to work out the file size of some text, okay? And the formula you're kind of using to work out the file size of text is the number of characters um, times the amount of bits used to represent each character. So it's important to pay attention to what bit ASCII is being used. Um, let's say we're trying to work out the file size of the phrase social distancing. Um, you're counting up all the characters. Again, all the characters would include the space as well, a space as a character. You use 17 characters times, let's say we're using 7 bit ASCII, so 7. 17 times 17 times 7 um, would give us 119 bits. Okay, but well that is if we're using 7 bit ASCII. If we're using extended ASCII now to encode that um, phrase, then each character is now 8 bits or has a value of 8 bits. 17 times 8 would now give you 136. Let's say we're now using Unicode to represent this phrase. Um, each character is going to be a 16 bit Unicode number, which would now make it, well, 17 characters times 16 bits. Each character is now 16 bit if you're using Unicode. Um, and that gives you a file size of 272. Okay. So that's basically it. All right, what you now need to do is the end of lesson quiz. Okay, use all that kind of information which is on the slides to basically answer questions on how you can convert binary into 